No, I'm thinking the same thing. Facts. The we're, same thing. we're on the same wavelength. Yeah. I'm astonished by all the audacity of these people. My work is precious. No, it's not. Good job. Good job. Precious. Yeah. Oh, Sprinting and stuff like that. Okay, so what do you think about this part right here? <laughs> All right, that might not work. In this program, students learn how to create uh, VR experiences, augmented reality experiences, um, game design, 3D modeling, animation, basically anything that falls under the real-time 3D technology umbrella. The instructor guides where we go in IT. This one takes on a more graphic side, a uh, more artistic side rather than a technical side, even though there's a lot of technical qualities that you know, that are part of that program. But at the same time, we wanted to do something that exhibits the strengths, not just in art, but also, you know, creativity, innovation. We want to have those core principles as part of what we do here. This program does all of it. It does the technical side. It does the artistic side. It brings the quality um, of, of uh, you know, employability skills that are surrounding with innovation. They're learning how to do audio. They're learning how to create 3D spatial audio. A lot of that is programming. We use uh, something called Unreal Engine in this program. And inside Unreal Engine, they can take an audio file and they can create spatial audio. And what that does is it makes it sound like the audio is coming around you instead of just in front of you. Um, that's one component. They work with graphics. Um, they have to work with programs like Photoshop to create the graphics. They work with programs like uh, Substance Painter to paint 3D models. They're working with Blender for 3D modeling. Um, sometimes they'll touch Maya, which is an industry standard program for 3D modeling. We include incredible amounts of video in here because it, it's all wrapped together with um, you know, the, the VR, virtual reality, augmented reality, the different elements that, that they cover in here include everything in those graphic areas. With Unreal Engine, they could create not only games, but they could create VR experiences, they could create AR experiences, they could create apps. Uh, architects are using it to do architectural visualization where they'll design a building, they'll give those blueprints to uh, people like my students that have that skill set, they'll bring it into Unreal Engine and they'll create a 3D version of that building. The client will then put on a VR headset and be able to walk through that building before it's ever built and determine whether they like it or not. Malachi Burley, Gianna Jones, Bryson Jackson, Sir Derek Jones. They are part of what we call our TXL team, the Experience Lab team. They work on special projects. So if there's something that we're doing that's a little bit unique, we'll give it to them to work on. Malachi Burley, he's brilliant. Programming wise, he can figure out anything. Bryson Jackson is really good with augmented reality. Sir Derek Jones, he's really, really good at texture painting, 3D models. Jayana Jones is very artistic. She's also heavily into the metahuman stuff. A couple of things kind of prompted me to join this program. At first, I didn't know anything about it, and I was very surprised when I got here at Chauvin and there was something like this. I was very interested in it because even when I was young, I got an Xbox, I loved games. I first thought in my head, I want to make a game. It was like one of my first youngest desires, I would say that. Uh, some of the things that I'm doing in this class this year, we're working on 3D models, you know, modeling characters, modeling walls, and st stuff like that. So, you know, put them in a game, put them more or, in or into a, um, a virtual set. We also are working on visual production. I went to Columbus for Skills, Skills USA from last year. It was a wonderful experience. They were, like, astounded by the, by the things that I brought there. Because almost, almost every other um, person who, who were brought there, 
they really couldn't, I'd say they, they couldn't compete with the things that I brought. Every bit of knowledge I had and talent that I showed them, I wouldn't have been there if I didn't come to this class. This is a, this is a game that I've been with. I've been working on since last school, last, since last school year. I've, been, I've made this game using Unreal Engine. Unreal, Unreal Engine is a software that, that you can use to make games, but it also has a, a bunch more uses. You could use it in the, you could use it to make a visual produ make a visual production set. Automakers are using this to design cars with. Architects are using this for house design. So there are unlimited uses for this program. In this application, you are building games to learn the program. This here is explaining, like I said, with the invisible uh, circle around your character. Mm -hmm. All this is checking is if there's any items overlapping that box. Anything in that box, it will be added to added to a pile of things that your character can pick up around you. Mm -hmm. The end result of this would be. The item that you that you just now picked up would be in your inventory, which the code for your character to even open and close the inventory it's here. And I have more code in here. You would have to double click this this button to open it. Here is the rest of it. This line of code here basically it, it basically it explains all that it is doing whenever you press. When you, whenever you press the, um, the open inventory button, it opens up a widget and it's adding it to the viewport and taking your plate and it's taking, it's taking your controller and allowing you to control what's ever on that widget. It'll allow you to press the buttons and close and open whatever you need to do inside the widget. And on, on the bottom, the bottom line of code just does the opposite just to close that same existing widget i showed you the code now let me show show you how it works mm -hmm. now you see that it, there's an item there's an item by your character and as i said before there's an there's an invisible there's an invisible circle around your character and it checks if there's any items around you and as you can see there's an item around me and it, and it appears on screen you can see what it is and what it looks like you press E to pick it up. It now disappears off the ground. It's in your inventory. You press Q, as I as I showed with the um, with the inventory code. You press Q to open your inventory. That now crystal line sword is now in your inventory. You're able to hover over it, and it will show you all of the stats and any other significant information about it. Well, the way this program is designed is the first year as juniors, they learn how to do programming and game design. Um, the game design is more or less learning how Unreal Engine works. Um, their senior year, they learn how to do 3D art and animation. Now, the reason we do that is we get to find out what skill sets each student has. Some will be really strong programmers, some are more artistic. And then once we can determine that, they start working together on projects where you'll have a couple art students working with a couple of the programming students and they'll create something. Um, the other thing that's really unique about this particular industry is a lot of the jobs are remote nowadays. So learning how to work with a team and work remotely with a team, that, that opens up opportunities for them where they're not just limited by the jobs that are available here in Youngstown. They're, the world is now their, their job market. Well, actually, growing up, both my brothers and my cousins, they got me into games. And I would play stuff like Mortal Kombat and NBA 2K and Madden and stuff like that. And then eventually, it just became like a, a staple in my life, just playing video games all the time. And then, once I got to high school, I realized that there's like a program I could be a part of that could, that I can make games rather than just play. Because like, you get bored playing games. You wanna make the game. And then that's what drove me to be in this. My favorite part is actually like making levels and the creating part of it, yeah. And like getting stuff to look cool and different colors and materials and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I like doing. This is how I program the physics in the gravity. Let me show you. In BP ball form. This is all the mechanics and what is behind the ball and makes it move and whatnot. So here you have the input axis, right thumb. It's a key binding I made. 
the inputs and uh, pretty much that's how you get it so like you can do a custom event when you press a certain key and uh, and you add the input to the controller if you're on controller and then there's also one for the mouse okay and then goes through these this system and then it ends up in set control rotation that's for moving the camera left and right and then you have input force which is for the force on the ball horizontal and it adds force and then there is a pause menu to pause you press the P button on where the P key on your keypad keyboard and then it creates the pause UI widget adds it to the viewport sets the game as pause and then it sets it here and uh, mouse show mouse cursor is checked because I want to be able to see the mouse and uh, use the mouse when the game is paused and then there's a settings menu but I haven't finished this the settings menu so this is kind of like just in the, pro in, in the process right now then your jump mechanics pressed branched can it jump if so how many times has it jumped if it's jumped more than one time or if it's jumped at least one time it can't jump again until it comes back down to the base and then branch if it hasn't jumped then it adds impulse which makes the ball jump and then on component hit sphere that's basically just the ball I've been working on this for about eight months now in class time I anticipate being finished in the next few weeks once they graduate, they have opportunities to go to post-secondary, which we have a great relationship with uh, Full Sail University out of uh, Florida. And Full Sail is a leader from a post-secondary level that we have a great relationship with, and our students uh, can directly go right into that program. We model our curriculum, our program, after what they do. So our students not only have the exposure to them, we also have the training that can easily pr provide them a launching space into their programs. I've been playing video games since I was like four or five. My dad got me into video games and my brother. Mostly fighting games though, so it got pretty competitive. I started playing video games more and learning mechanics. And then I started going on YouTube and stuff and like watching behind the scenes and different type of directors and people that worked on the games telling like the world what happens and that really piqued my interest. Right now, I'm working on facial animations with metahumans, and I'm actually pretty excited about that because um, it's something that I've been learning since I got here, because that was like the main thing that piqued my interest when I found out what a metahuman was, because it's facial animation, mocap, stuff like that. Because um, I've always wanted to like, learn about the games where how um, like the act like actual actors when they when they imp import their face into the games and how does the voice acting work like what is deemed a good voice actor in a video game I've always wanted to learn like the behind the process of that so learning like being able to do it here without like all that like really expensive equipment and like most of it's free I just need like an iPad it's actually pretty cool as a young lady, it is hard because there, the usual thing is no one's going to really expect a young lady to be in the field in the first place. So that's usually the question. And um, honestly, it's actually not that hard to get along with the people because and they're like shocked sometimes because they wouldn't expect like a young lady to be interested in what we're doing or what we're learning per se, because it's not something that a young lady would usually be interested in. I don't struggle anymore with school, especially since I got the Chauvin, because my teacher and the peers that I have around me, 
they're actually like really helpful. They might not seem like it, but they really are. They make my day like pretty cool and better. This is not me. I, I could make me with the new Unreal face mapping, mm -hmm. but this is what I made so far before I decide to make myself and animate myself. So I'm using Live Link to move this and well this metahuman around in real time. And it's honestly really simple to set up. And I take recordings and I bake my recordings of her into animations. After graduation, students can go on and they could work for different studios that are working with programming, with VR, AR, or they could go into um, uh, to college and they could learn more, or they could go to the military. Virtual reality and augmented reality is really heavy in the military right now, so it just puts them a step ahead of uh, other people that are just entering these fields after graduation. I'm a modeling specialist. Modeling is like sculpting, but on a computer. You make like that. You can make eyes and stuff, make hair. I want to work in the industry like this, for modeling, for modeling for people and stuff. My dream job is game design, and I'm learning it here. Uh, I have real-time 3D technology going on and stuff. Uh, we can, you can uh, drive cars, draw shoot guns, pick up weapons, open doors, and stuff like that. In our class, we can build uh, environments just like this and make them work in virtual reality. And let me show you what that looks like. All right, you could uh, snap turn. If you wanna change it, you have to press B. Well, X on the left controller, that is like smooth and stuff. If you wanna teleport, you gotta Press down on the pad, well not the pad, but the uh, joystick. You change it by, with A, that you could like navigate where you want. You press B again, you could, you could uh, teleport over there and it shows you where you're going and stuff. And then you press B again, you could regularly walk instead of just teleporting and stuff. Here, I'm gonna shoot the gun. I'm gonna shoot it at uh, these blocks. Yeah. With motion controllers, I could interact with the world around me. This VR technology can be used in many different industries. They're using this in the medical field for surgical training. They're using this for real estate to give people a real time walk through a house, a real house. And there's really no limit to what can be done with this technology. We have advisory committees and we have advisors on there and those are industry uh, professionals um, that we bring in and we get their input on you know, where the curriculum should go, what skills they're looking for with employees, things like that. So we definitely work with industry uh, professionals. Our mission here is opportunity. It's success for students. Um, you know, that, that is what education is all about from an institutional standpoint. It's, my core you know mission as an administrator here you know providing opportunities for students is one thing but it's also providing an opportunity for growth at a regional national uh, level for those industries that need our workers so bad yeah when i'm like watching movies and playing video games like i notice things that i would never usually see if i didn't know all this stuff that goes on behind the scenes it's a very vast technical skill that we cover um, everything from programming all the way to audio and um, even video. We are doing things that other universities are, or other schools, but even universities are doing. So that's putting us in a position to where we can be early adopters. 
at least at an institutional level, um, to bring this opportunity to our students, give them a head start. When I graduate, I want to go to Full Sail University. It's down in Florida. That's like the that's where that's like the biggest industry name for college in the nation, and uh, a lot of successful people have come out of Full Sail actually. I think for me, the biggest thing that really excites me is when you see a student create that thing for the first time that gets them excited. And they may have been struggling with it for weeks, maybe even months, they couldn't figure it out, and all of a sudden they had that aha moment, and it all comes together, and you can just see them light up, and you know, it's the joy in that. It's, it, it's for me, that's the rewarding part of the job, is seeing them get to experience that for the first time. I see myself being in some type of tech job. I want to work at either Apple or like Microsoft, one of those big ones. Our students can walk out of our building and walk, work for Pixar and work for those uh, national um, you know, companies that, um, worldwide companies that, um, that provide that. Shopping has shot me through the roof.